Hello, my name is Russell Myers, independent for U.S. President for 2024. The U.N. just released a report that is stating that 25% of the global population is going to be facing food shortages this year, as much as 25%. This is not a far distant hypothetical situation. This is right here, right now. What do they mean by food shortage? In terms of UN language, that means severe malnutrition all the way up to death by starvation. At lower levels of food shortages, termed food insecurity, their estimate is probably very, very far short of reality. Disclaimer here, I thought it was the UN that issued that report. I read about it a few days ago, but when I tried to find the actual report to include here with hard numbers, I couldn't locate it. It might have been Oxfam or somebody else that reported and released that report. However, in previous reports issued by the UN in 2021, the UN had stated that food inflation had increased by 30% globally and that 20% of the global population faced food shortages at that time before the Ukrainian conflict. So for the number to increase by 5% of the global population is unremarkable as far as statistics are concerned. While it is true that America is likely to be less severely impacted than many countries, even Biden has admitted that Americans will definitely feel the impact of food shortages. Yet in 2021, as many as 20% of Americans reported experiencing food insecurity to some degree. That was before the current accelerated rate of inflation. Food insecurity is easily caused by inflation. Europe is already going through this and will get significantly worse in the near future. Experts say that Scottish citizens may well see an increase in energy bills in winter of this year, which can exceed $3,500 in U.S. dollars per month. Obviously, most workers will be unable to afford those bills. Since October of 2021, it has been reported that Scottish citizens have seen a cost increase of, for energy of roughly $700 U.S. dollars or more per month on top of their baseline energy bills. As oil prices continue rising, Americans are experiencing the same thing, being forced to choose between food and paying utility bills, while rent is also increasing. The obvious villain being portrayed here is Russia. However, there is a lot more to the issue. It is obvious that the Ukraine conflict is a huge issue because Russia and Ukraine account for roughly 30% of global grain exports. Ukraine cannot produce or export grain at this time. Russia, thanks to sanctions imposed on the country, has suspended grain export through the end of June, though there are indications that this will become an indefinite suspension. It doesn't matter how you feel about Russia. Their concern is securing their own food supply, which is a reasonable stance considering that they have no idea what other sanctions may be imposed on their country. Beyond that, India has suspended wheat exports due to a drought, also securing their domestic food supply first and foremost. Kazakhstan 
has also restricted grain and flour exports, as much of their trade is dependent on grain purchased from Russia, which they process and send out as flour. Meanwhile, Western U.S. states continue to experience a major ongoing drought. A side note here, there have been reports of silos full of grain awaiting export from Odessa, Ukraine. It cannot be exported because of the Russian blockade of the Black Sea ports and a recent report that Ukraine had mined the Black Sea ports. Several issues here. One is that it would be foolish for Ukraine to export that grain at this time with their own crop production deeply affected by this conflict. They will need that grain for their own food security when the conflict is over. It is normal for ports to be blocked during conflict. This prevents more weapons from being delivered to Ukraine and restricts the routes by which weapons can enter the country. I am not saying any of this is ethical, but it is tactically understandable and normal. Lastly on that point, even if the grain were to be exported from Ukraine right this minute, there is the strong possibility that doing so would merely extend food shortages into 2023. U.S. President Joe Biden has made the statement that the U.S. can mitigate the global food shortage by increasing U.S. production of food crops. What? Uh, first of all, increasing agricultural production is something which takes planning. It's not something where you make a decision one day and plant three times the amount of crops the following day for harvest in one season. With current growing methods, it takes a lot of arable land and a lot of water. For half the country, water is a huge problem. For the rest of the country, arable land may exist, which is not being farmed currently, but the government would have to pay a profitable sum for it to be worked. Buy the, buy the land and hire people to work it, or seize the land and still hire people to work it. Then you still have the problem of a shortage of heavy equipment that is needed, especially at affordable prices. Increasing production will worsen the equipment shortage tremendously. Increasing agricultural production would also require a lot of fuel at a time when fuel is allegedly in short supply and what fuel is available is at near record high prices. So this would force the cost of fuel even higher. Would the U.S. limit fuel exports to countries already imposing fuel and energy rationing? Just the suggestion of increasing agricultural products uh, or production is something which should enrage every one of us. If this is a possibility, that means that millions of people around the world have been dying of starvation every year for no reason. It also means that many U.S. citizens have faced food insecurity and food infl inflation for no reason. Though we do know, <coughs> pardon me, the actual reason is corporate profit. What I find most likely to happen is that the U.S. will, like fuel, start exporting food and U.S. citizens will pay a heavy price for this to happen. Many who are on the edge of food insecurity will become food insecure as a result. I am not suggesting allowing people to starve. 
not by any stretch of the imagination. It's very much the opposite. What I am saying is that this emphasizes the mandatory nature of some of the policy proposals I have already outlined. If we were engaged in a diplomatic peace process regarding the Russia-Ukraine conflict instead of sending more weapons, extending and intensifying that conflict, this food shortage would be far less severe. If we began implementing enclosed farming methods like greenhouses and vertical farming, we could be producing more food using far less land, water, fertilizer, fuel, or heavy machinery. All of this combined would decrease the cost of food in rather short order while increasing food security. None of that is going to happen this year. None of that will be suggested by anyone else this year. None of this will be discussed by anyone else this year. I am alone on this. What we will see this year is more war, more hunger, more food insecurity, more inflation, more corporate profit, and hundreds of millions, perhaps billions, of people dying because of our own government throwing gasoline on a raging blaze in a country in which we have no business, ignoring our own citizens, and a global food crisis so they can sell more bombs. We have the option for a better future. This is why you should support my campaign and vote for me in 2024. If we do not choose the better option, the future we are consciously choosing will look even worse than what we are currently experiencing. I cannot stress this enough. We have to make the choice to move beyond hatred and see what the cost of maintaining that hatred truly is. If you can afford it, please donate whatever you can to support and expand my campaign. You can also help by sharing this article or video. Discuss these subjects widely. Thank you for watching or reading. Be sure to follow me on whatever medium you are now watching or reading. And I hope you have a good day.